So good evening. Welcome to St. Vincent's Hill Historic District Neighborhood Coalition September meeting. I want to thank Andrea Aus for being willing to speak to our coalition. Good evening, community members. Thank you for coming out tonight. This process started while I was away on vacation. As some of you may know, I am a member of the General Plan Working Group. This group is a citizen commission sponsored by the city to help rewrite the general plan for the city of Vallejo. Later this month and in October, community workshops will be held about three visions for Vallejo. This will be done in the hopes that the citizens will create through the democratic process their vision for what Vallejo will be. This meeting tonight is a formal meeting of the St. Vincent's Hill Neighborhood Coalition. Our speaker tonight is Andrea Aus, who had originally invited to answer our questions in our neighborhood, questions and concerns about the general plan and the future of Vallejo. As I said, I was away on vacation. While on vacation, a great stink heated up with this new Orsum cement factory and the Vallejo Marine Terminal. Last year, one or two people were concerned about it. Now many more people are worried. I also want to say thank you to those few who were concerned from the very beginning. As a member of the General Plan Commission, the cement factory and the VMT were never discussed. And tonight, Andrea House has said that she may not be able to answer questions regarding this project and the larger VMT. As of early Wednesday of last week, enough concern was present in the community that I notified Ms. House that questions would center on Orsum and the VMT. It is only today that we hear she will not be able to address this project. So South Vallejo in the general plan is slated for light industry, commercial, and mixed use residential. Orsum and the VMT are heavy industry. Some guidelines may be in order for tonight. If you have questions about the VMT and Orsum, try to relate your question to the general plan and the community's vision for Vallejo. Thank you, uh, Nathan. Um, just to clarify very quickly, um, I was approached uh, last month by Nathan to talk about the general plan, um, and that is in what my intention is going to be. The focus of my presentation tonight is going to be uh, really about economic development efforts and the uh, economic development department and the things that we are doing and things that we are working on. Um, also, the general plan, which is an extremely important part of our community's vision for the next 25 years. Um, I didn't say that I was not going to talk about the um, VMT Orsum project, but I will get into, in fact, I'm going to be talking about it under our major projects. Actually, I'm, it's one of the first slides I'm going to talk about because um, I've recently found that there's been some, you know, some, uh, some indication that tonight's meeting was going to be focused on VMT and Orsum. And that was not the case because we actually have a formal public community meeting that will look very similar to this strictly on the VMT Orsum project on October 7th. And that is a very important meeting if you are interested in learning more about the project and learning more about the process. Uh, I'm going to talk about the process a little bit tonight. But the reason that it's important for you if you um, want to learn about the project and to um, submit comments and questions about the project to focus it on that meeting is because that we will have the full team of, um, of consultants and experts on this project. The applicants will be there um, to provide um, answers to your questions and for us to formally record your comments as part of the public process. So 
I intend to talk more about the general plan tonight and certainly uh, just to give you an update on where we're at uh, in terms of the process on VMT and Orsum. So I hope you understand that it's really important for us to uh, record your comments in an appropriate way so that we can include your comments as part of the formal response to comments process, which is required under the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, I'd like to ask if we'll have time from the audience for questions tonight. Um, we can, I can certainly um, uh, address questions. The issue is that if there's an expectation that this is a formal um, question and answer uh, meeting on the VMT Orsum project, I would encourage people to go to the October 7th meeting, which will be in this room from 6 to 8 p.m., and you will then have your questions uh, formally part of the record, and you will have a, a much more thorough response. Okay, so um, it sounds like we'll have time for questions, so that's a good thing. Now, um, I'll let Andrea do her presentation, and then hopefully we'll have, we have to be out of here by 8.45. So um, there's a few things that I have to take care of before we get into the presentation, get into the question and answer. Um, if anyone has a cell phone, could you please silence it or put it on vibrate? Also, if you need to use the bathroom, you can do so quietly. It's in the library to the right as you go in. Um, and thank you all for being here. Um, we'll probably stop. Can, how long is your presentation? Um, I would say probably 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. Okay. So in a half an hour, we'll stop and go for questions. I think it's important that we remember this is not an official comment period. If you need to submit a comment about the project, there are ways to do that. Maybe Andrea will talk about them tonight. I don't know. But tonight is not an official comment period. Thank you. Once again, just to clarify, we are in the official comment period on the draft EIR, which can be accessed on the city's website, and uh, we have an open city hall forum. So it is the official public comment period. Um, the uh, verbal comments that we are to receive from you um, are best served, given to us, and the questions as well during that public meeting that I have in red up here on October 7th, simply because we can have the right people here to be able to address those comments. We have the full scope of people to record your comments and your questions, and they will be part of the record that we can use to develop our response, our official response to your comments. So, yes. is that we are happy to receive questions, we have been, since the draft EIR was released, happy to receive those via email, um, so that, again, I'm the recipient of all those emails, and then what I do is I bounce them to the appropriate people to be able to provide you with a, a response. So it's not as if we're refusing to receive any questions, it's, it's really about me being able to give you the most appropriate 
uh, response that is based on the, te the you know, the whatever technical es experts needs to respond to them. So I, I, you can, you can, you can email uh, sure, sure, just a second, one at a time, if you don't mind. I, I, my email address, my hard copy um, mailing address, um, yeah, either email, Open City Hall, by USPS mail, um, anything that is in writing will be part of that public record, okay? So any way that you can carry your pigeon, whatever you want, just be able to put it down on a hard copy or email um, or Open City Hall, all of those things are valid ways, methods of providing your comments or questions. And like I said, at any point you can do that. I just cannot answer a lot of your technical or your questions tonight. I am not the technical expert. I simply bump those questions to the people that can give you that response. Okay. So I just, in fairness, I want to be able to, and I, I understand people want to know more about the project. I can give you, a, a, you know, as much as I have on this slide essentially as to what it is, and I think everybody probably knows that. If you read the executive summary and the EIR, you can get a pretty good sense of, and the project description, you can get a pretty good sense of what the project um, is about. Um, so therefore, I just wanted to manage those expectations off the bat. Um, I did get Nathan's email on Wednesday. Unfortunately, with my schedule, it's really difficult to sort of change course um, that quickly um, to be able to give you what the expectation was. And I didn't get an agenda for tonight, so um, I wasn't aware if there was anything else. Yes? I just wanted to say, in agreement with what she just said, you know, we could email you with our concerns and questions, but we aren't able to question the people, you know, who are want to do this project until the 4th. Right? So really it's like, it would be nice if that period could be extended because yeah, I can email you with a lot of questions, but if the fourth is when the people from the terminal well, and the cement plant are going to be there to actually, for the first time, to really answer everybody's questions. Right. So if so there that are, really is a short wait, period. Wait a second. If there are peer, if there are specific questions in which only the applicants can address, then we have directed those questions to the applicant. Yeah, but they, for clarification. It's different for them to get written questions than to answer things that people are saying in person. Pub, a public forum, we're not getting that until very close to the end of the comment period. So we don't really have 45 days. It's very short, like it's 12 days, like she said. It, well, you have 45 days. No, but what you're saying act. is in terms of an, a back and forth, a dialogue, yes. is what you're saying. Forum. Understood. The process also doesn't allow for us to do community education. What you're talking about is people responding to individuals' questions back to that individual, which allows none of the people in the community to learn what other people are asking about the project or what they're learning about it. And you're not doing anything to educate the public about what's actually happening. All you're doing is responding to specific questions one-on-one, -on -one, which does nothing in terms of uh, allevi alleviating people's fears, or does it do very much to educate the public about the general uh, part of the proposal? And I want to stress proposed project. You keep using the word project like it's a done deal. And there's a lot of people in this room here to let you know it's not a done deal. Yeah. Is it, I would say proposed. Um, right. So, and Andrea, do you want to do your, your presentation and then we can ask some questions and, and you can respond to those however you see fit? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. So, this slide has been up for a little while, but um, I will just briefly go through it. Um, as you probably know, the uh, proposal is to reestablish industrial uses at the former General Mills um, flour mill site uh, at the end of Lemon Street on Durr Street. Um, it, consists of a number of components, uh, one of which is to uh, remove the deteriorated uh, wharf piers that are out there in the water and construct a new facility uh, for, for um, ships to bring in uh, commodities. Uh, there is another component, which is this Orsum component, 
they are intending to uh, construct and operate what would be an industrial facility for alternative material to Portland cement. <clears throat> Again, tonight's meeting is really not the meeting to discuss the project simply because I was asked as a single individual to do a, pro a presentation to this group on the general plan. Um, not specific to this project and I am not the expert on this project. So um, on October 7th would be the time for you to be able to get um, that education, that uh, dialogue, the back and forth, and to, of course, record your comments um, as part of the official public review period. Um, it's critical that we get the public input on this proposed project um, because it is part of the record. It is part of um, the consideration of this project as we move through the public hearing process. Uh, the prob public hearing process will include uh, not only the community meeting as part of the draft EIR review, uh, but it will include a planning, at least one planning commission meeting and a city council meeting ultimately. So with that, I'm going to start talking about the department in which I lead, and that is the Economic Development Department. Um, I call it the Community and Economic Development Department, even though that's not really the actual title of it, but I call it that anyway because most cities that oversee the divisions I do um, call it a Community Development Department. So in general, what we do is we foster investment in the community. Um, we support high quality development and we promote job and revenue generating opportunities throughout our community. I oversee three divisions and that's economic development, the building division and the planning division. Um, in fact, I've been here for almost three years. Uh, for the first two and a half years, I ran the planning division as the planning manager. So I wanted to give you a little um, overview of what the division, the division's um, focus uh, each focus uh, area is, as well as the types of projects that they're working on right now. Um, the Economic Development Division is interested in business retention and attraction and expansion. Uh, we also um, manage major development projects, which include um, Mare Island, North Mare Island, as well as um, the waterfront. Uh, we also have a division that works in asset management. The city owns a number of assets, land in general. And uh, for example, all of, most of your park land is city owned, um, but it is leased to the Greater uh, Vallejo uh, Recreation District under a master lease. We also do things like downtown revitalization. And we are working on downtown revitalization right now. Uh, the planning division, essentially it looks at long-range planning, so the general plan is part of that. Um, policy uh, development and implementation, as well as coordinating on major capital improvement projects. In terms of current planning, uh, we look at things like our zoning code, our municipal code, and update our municipal code to reflect consistency with the uh, state and federal laws. Uh, we adopt and implement changes to our codes uh, to reflect the community's desires and needs, as well as we oversee development review. So, uh, for example, the VMT Orson project is considered um, a development project. It is a proposed project and it is an application for land use entitlements. Um, we oversee uh, the review and coordination of uh, the um, development applications. Also, we oversee environmental review as it pertains to the California Environmental Quality Act. <clears throat> the building division, as you may guess, um, primarily deals with the health and safety of the built environment. So they are responsible for um, reviewing plans if you're to come in and want to do some changes to your house or to your business, 
um, that require building permits, electrical permits, build plumbing, mechanical. They issue uh, permits and they review them. They review um, applications and issue certificates of occupancy when uh, new projects are completed and ready for business. So in terms of the Economic Development Division, some of the recent activities that have occurred and some of the initiatives that have occurred, including um, building some staff capacity, the City Council made a commitment that economic development was a major priority in this community. And so, for example, we didn't have an asset manager, and that's problematic when you have a number of leases of your city um, property and you have no sort of oversight to see if they're paying rent, for example. Um, so we made sure we brought somebody on board that had uh, asset management experience um, to oversee leases. Um, reviewing the portfolio um, before we hired up people to do so, we had no idea, we had no real good record of what cities' properties are, where they are, um, how much we are getting in terms of lease revenue, um, what the terms of the leases are. So all of that has been, um, or we're still in the process of buttoning that down, but um, it's an ongoing process. Uh, the disillusion of redevelopment in California really did impact cities pretty greatly. And one of the th um, duties that we also have is how do we manage the unwinding of redevelopment. Vallejo had a redevelopment agency and a number of properties uh, that were owned by the redevelopment agency. Um, after redevelopment went away, then there's a rather complicated process to uh, determine what happens to those assets that used to belong to the redevelopment agency. Uh, we recently were approved um, to our long range Property management plan is what they call um, the plans to sort of figure out what to do with all that property. If it's to sell it, to um, convert it to something else, um, to make it ready for development. Um, so there's a number of different things that you can do to form a redevelopment agency property. Um, we are implementing the now adopted uh, property management plan. Uh, we've established a development advocacy role. When I got here, there was a number of um, public <clears throat> people in the public and in the development community that were quite upset at how they were treated when they walked into the permit center. Um, and in terms of our responsiveness, um, our customer service ethics, um, a number of things we would receive some rather negative feedback from the public on. We have focused on that and we have improved in a lot of ways. We're still not there. We still need to do a lot of work to um, maximize our responsiveness and our transparency to the community. But it is something that we are certainly continually working on. Um, part of that is uh, in terms of an advocate. So somebody that, a small business for example, who wants to expand their business in town. Um, that's something that we would definitely want to have somebody who may have a little more experience in the development process help uh, with people that may not do that every day. Um, and we've found that that has been a val valuable role for small businesses because uh, you know they don't expand every day so they don't know all the ins and outs of the bureaucracy and the process. So we found it very valuable to actually assign somebody to that role. Um, and found that it's helped. Um, we've reestablished a business retention program, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. And like I said before, we are staff to what's called the successor agency to our redevelopment agency. Some of the major activities we're undertaking in, in the economic development, the division, of course, these, um, these activities translate throughout uh, the city organization, so it's not solely in the division. North Mare Island, we had a solicitation for development uh, a little over a year ago, and we had a very good response, a very positive response. North Mare Island is about 157 acres of city-owned land that's right on the water, and it's, uh, it's unusual in that you have a specific plan for Mare Island that 
says this should be um, industrial or advanced manufacturing, um, and that's what the community had had said in their policy document. So to solicit um, development and developers, development teams to um, submit what they would like to do and have the city council uh, and the community weigh in on that is a very unusual process, um, but is one that I think was uh, pretty successful. <clears throat> um, and we are still working on uh, North Mare Island. It is a problematic site. It's, uh, it's got some geotechnical issues, but not something that can't be overcome. Overcome, I should say. Can, um, I, can I stop you real quick? We have a question. Sure. So, am I at the wrong meeting? No, 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 no. I mean, hold, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I thought I came down to hear about the proposed new cement plant. Did I? You know, and and I know about economic development, such as it is in this city, or such as it is not. Um, but. You know, I gave up the 49ers to come here about cement. <laughs> Can we hear about the cement factory? That's an early question from the audience. <laughs> That's the temperature of the room. Yeah, pretty much. So, so we have about 15 more minutes of presentation, maybe 10 or 15 more minutes of presentation, and then we'll take your questions. Now for those of you who arrived late and are a little bit confused, what happened was, and I went over this at the beginning of the meeting, so shame on me for being here on time, but um, so I was on vacation. I'm a member of the general plan working group. I come back from vacation and I hear about this cement plant. I notified Andrea on Wednesday that there was community concern. And I told her that questions would focus on the cement plant. So we're at a little bit of a quandary. We have questions. We have, this is not a public comment period. We want to make that very clear. We have a chance to ask our questions tonight. Andrea has 10 or 15 more minutes of her presentation, and then we'll go to questions. So just hold tight. I'm sorry to the people who are here late. I'm sorry about that. But Andrea is going to present for another 15, and then we'll have our questions. So thank you very much. Well, before we go on, I, I just want to make clear that this was not intended to, I'm not trying to not be transparent. I am simply saying that if we had known much more in advance that this would have been the sole focus, which I have the email from Nathan inviting me here and it's about the general plan, I certainly would have gathered the appropriate parties to be here to be more responsive to you. This isn't about me avoiding it's really about providing you with the most accurate information about the project. And I am not the person to ask, right? I put my name out there to say, if you have questions or comments, you can email them to me. And I will assure you that I will find the answers for you. But I am not the sole person that can answer those questions. So I do hope you understand that we do have a meeting coming up. It may not be the date that people are, are really excited about, but it is a date where everybody will be there that can help answer those questions and concerns. So I'm hoping that you understand that. Yes. I think we understand probably because it's a change of agenda, so you are not but I think you can also see the, 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 the interest from the resident. Yes. So is it possible for you to arrange something which will address people's concern before the... the, the right. So um, is that possible? And I think people here will be very happy and will not... Because we kind of feel like 
there's no chance. I mean, just the next thing is October 7th. So if if you can arrange something before that, I think we will all be very happy to to be at that meeting. That is the first thing. And second thing, on the process wise, I think since we are not going to hear a lot of detail about this man plan, but all I think most of the people who come to this meeting are thinking about that. So probably after this presentation, we as a group we can kind of discuss this among ourselves and organize and, and organize ourselves and to, to, to do this. So I think these are the two points. One is on the process. So after the presentation and the question and answer, we can still stay here and talk about this. And the other one is the request for the city to provide another opportunity to address, I mean, residents. Right. So just to be clear, you know, the city really, we didn't have anything to do with this. In fact, I, I've never received an agenda about tonight. I, I, and, and so obviously I had a different impression of, of what, what I was supposed to be prepared to do. And so I, you know, input is critical. However you get that input organized or um, if you get the input to me, um, again, I would be more than happy to facilitate a, a response. And it is, of course, part of the record. So everybody will hear what the response is um, to your particular questions. Yes, Judy. Since you're an expert in someone, I know that you're really good at it. Uh, since you understand CEQA, I think it would be really helpful for people to understand what the process of CEQA is how these, it's, it's like hopscotch, you have to step on all these squares. And we're in the draft environmental impact stage, and it is a certain period. The end of that period, all of this stuff gets commented and it goes back to the consultant, and they prepare the final EIR. Then, but the issue that I think people need to understand is when we make comments in this 45 day period, this is the record. This is, these are record comments. And if you, if you make your comments, then you have a standing because CEQA is designed to be enforced with citizen litigation. So if you haven't said anything in that 45 day period, then you, you can't say anything after. So waiting until October 7th is kind of late to really start organizing your comments. You have to write them down to work So I'm flattered that you consider me a secret expert. Um, I would not categorize myself as that. I'm more of a generalist, but um, thank you. And, and your words uh, were accurate and eloquently stated. So um, everything she said is true. <laughs> uh, the public comment period is right now. Please don't think you cannot comment the official administrative record depends on us receiving that in writing. Or if you're at the public meeting, we can record them ourselves for you. Um, yes, sir. All right, given the tone of the feeling in the room, given what you're going to go back to work tomorrow feeling like after tonight, given the fact that we all feel like the 45 days has already started, the time is already ticking, and yet we have not had any opportunity to educate ourselves or the public about this project. How are you going to be responsive to the feeling in this room that waiting until October 2nd, 7th to hear from us about our concerns is too short a period of time for us to be able to responsibly react to your veering from the general plan? It's the city's flirting with creating heavy industry that does not go along with the existing general plan for South Vallejo. It's the city who's creating a predicament in which they're going against their own general plan. They're allowing the investor to spend all of this capital so that they will then risk lawsuits to the city for their investment, all of which creates a momentum at City Hall to rubber stamp this and all of us feeling like this is being jammed down our throat very quickly. I'm sorry, can I, can I just clarify what the general, you said the general plan is inconsistent? What, 
South Philae was light no, industry, no, the not heavy site. industry. The site is is designated for light I'm industry. Sorry. Oh. Okay, so here's the thing. You you're new here. I get that. I I and I feel distressed because there seems to be no institutional memory in this town. Twelve years ago, the city council secretly agreed with Beckel and Shell to allow a liquefied natural gas plant. It divided this community, and 12 years later, those divisions are still very apparent. It was one of the most divisive, if not the most divisive thing to ever come to this town in its whole history. And now you at City Hall are flirting with creating a very, very similar environment. And there are many of us who were involved in the liquefied natural gas plant that resent the use of our time and our energy and our retirements and our lives to fight off another one of these proposals that City Hall is flirting with uh, when it's even going against your own general plan. Well, <clears throat> I don't know um, about flirting. I can say that um, we have accepted an application as if, and which we are required to do, and we are in the public review period. So I'm not exactly sure what you're meaning. What do you know about that? That's what we need to know. So, what is this yeah, I believe. Um, intensive. Yeah, it is intensive use. Um, okay. I have a suggestion, we, yes. Andrea. Um, I think you can read the tone and the interest level of many in the room. And I think I can speak for many people, because I know many people here, I think the primary interest is whatever you can say, even if it's just about the process of the EIR and the right. process of the application, um, I would suggest that probably many people actually are familiar with your work in economic development and the department and if we could get the Reader's Digest version of the rest of your presentation and move to qu the questions, then it might be um, illuminating for all. And the only thing I would add is that to the extent this either complements or contradicts what's going on with the general plan update, then that could be a tie-in to what you had expected to talk about to begin with. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a good suggestion. I think clearly the rest of my presentation probably, um, unless somebody really wants to see it, is probably not of interest to the majority of people in this room. <laughs> Throwing that out there. Um, that being said, I can say that the general plan update, we are not at the point to which we are considering, um, we are, we are, at the point where we are developing a preferred scenario which will be borne by um, community input during our workshop phase that we have coming up at the end of September and the beginning of October. So um, the public hearing and public input phase on taking the three preferred scenarios that have been publicized and, and reviewed by the city council and then precipitated out to a single preferred scenario is in the process. And so um, in terms of site-by-site -site, uh, designations, we are not at that point because we still need to get um, community input on what will ultimately be our preferred land use scenario. So, so she, she, was, she was ahead. Just, just to ask, do we want to go to our question cards? Because a lot of people put in cards. Yes? yes. yes. Okay, so. I will. Um, I can, can you? What I need to understand is that if tomorrow morning I write a letter or email you yes. and tell you what I think, yes. negative or positive, about Correct. this whole project, and I send a three page letter to you. Correct. I have made an official mm -hmm. comment mm -hmm. that's going on record. It yes. doesn't have to be October 7th. No. But in the mean, but but what I would like to do probably is have a time where I can get more specific information other than just reading the EIR. 
so that I can make that comment. But all of us here still, tomorrow morning, could write a letter, and it okay. would be on record, and everyone there would read it saying, we don't want this, we've if that's been, what we're saying. We've okay. already that's, been addressing. Thank you, because I don't yes. know that everyone understood. Well, well put. Um, and if there are questions in that letter, we will do our best to respond to you. So we can question and we can comment. We yes. Can make our, our voice, our opinion, heard about Correct. And we will aggregate all of those comments that we receive and the questions and the responses to those questions uh, during the response to comments period. So you're absolutely right. So we're going to the questions now. Um, so the first question I have, I'll bring the mic to her, is from Colleen Cole Morrison. Um, okay, um, on your first slide, you had um, Orsum, a construction operation of industrial facility for alternative material to Portland cement. May I make a suggestion that the city start to talk about the entire EIR allowance for any cement product, including Portland cement, which is an extremely polluting process. I met with Stephen Bryan, the president of Orsem, and asked him about that. And he is a businessman. He has a 65, potentially, I mean, if he gets this to go through, he will have a 65-year lease. And he wants the capacity to respond to market conditions in whatever way he feels, as a businessman, that he must respond. That is the way business people think. That's fine. But the city continues to say the, I, I call it the alternative one, the GBBS cement that they're making, which is the really pretty white stuff that they made the Bay Bridge out of. That's the Louis Vuitton cement. And people want it. They do. It's a real business plan. But as long as our lease with him gives him the business opportunities to have Portland cement there, then we need the EIR to do its work on Portland cement. So I, because otherwise, how can we possibly have a land use that officially responds to what we are putting into the lease? So that's my question. So um, the project description Um, describes the project and what you're saying is that your follow-up conversation with Steve Bryan, I'm sorry. It's in the proposal. It's in the EIR. I see. Okay. And that's where I found out about it. So I, I see. You. Thank you. I will take that note down. <laughs> so should, should we go to our next question? Lori Alio? I hate these things. I always feel like I'm expected to sing or something. Um, Andrea, thank you for being here. Um, I'm Lori, Dr. Lori Alio. Um, I do a lot of community change work for a living. Um, so what I did was immediately go and look at statistics for the surrounding neighborhood um, that's immediately adjacent to the site. Um, Andrea, you know, I was so happy when you uh, decided that you were going to be redoing the general plan and that general plan was going to include a health element. It's fairly innovative for a, a general plan to include a health element. And, uh, you know, a lot of cities are doing it. And, and in doing that, you actually cast a special lens on health in the community when you're trying to achieve the goals of your, your, uh, your general plan. So. So I went and I looked at just some stuff that's really easy to find on the net around uh, statistics and in various reports. And put my glasses on for this one. The census tract that includes Lemon Street and it goes downtown to Highway 80 and west of Cortola Parkway, kind of along, along the river, has um, 15 to 25% of its residents under the federal poverty line. 
The federal poverty line is what these days? Under $20,000, I believe. Um, 15 to 25%, just for contrast, in Hiddenbrook, they're in the lowest sort of statistical range, under 5%, much under 5%. Um, in that neighborhood, 35% of the households are female-headed households. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot that goes along with that, a lot of struggle for families. Uh, 20 to 25% of the households have young children in them, okay? And that's really important, and this gets to one of my points around just how we really need to dig deeper into this. Uh, research at UCSF shows that young children that are exposed to uh, emissions from traffic in infancy, are that's strongly linked to the development of asthma later. We have an asthma problem here. We know we have higher than normal rates of asthma. And this is particularly prevalent in the African American Latino community. So what I read in that EIR was look, not just even looking at the process of production, but the number of trucks not just boats are coming in, trucks are coming in. You've seen, you, you guys know the roads over in that neighborhood. They're, a lot of them are residential roads. There are a lot of trucks that are gonna be coming in. Um, the number in the report really includes the plant and not the terminal. So I am very concerned about health and the impact of health. And I'm trying to link this, I'm trying very hard here to do a twist and link this to the general plan because I know that's what you came here to discuss, Andrea. Is there gonna be some kind of further digging into the health impacts of this particular project at some point you know, during this, this uh, feedback period? Thank you, Lori. Um, well, I can, I can tell you this, and I, this translates to anybody that, ha that has questions or comments tonight. If you are to please just type those up and send me an email, Colleen, yours too. Um, we can certainly get you a written, we can get you a response on that. Um, I'm sorry I'm not prepared to really address that specifically, but again, tomorrow morning if you send me those emails, I will make sure that they get uh, a response to you, okay? Okay, hold on, we're... So I have a question. After the the draft impact go the draft environmental impact report goes through, what happens then? All of the comments go to the EIR consultant. All the comments, all the written comments, all the comment, all the comments, all the written comments that go um, that and go to the city are issued in this in the in the the meetings orally, but best written, then go to the consultant and they parse through them and they answer all of those. So in the back of the final EIR, there will be this whole comment where your letter is there and the answer to every question is there, written by the, with the consultant. So um, all the answer, questions will be answered at that point. Thank you, Judy, and that just um, confirms what I have been saying all night, which is, Get them in writing, submit them in writing. They will be part of the record. Anything you ask me tonight isn't going to be part of the record unless you follow it up with an email to me, okay? Hold on. Um, I need to take the pulse of the room. Do we continue with cards or? Okay. So our next speaker is Ann Carr. Um, I have two questions. Um, one is, and I'll relate this to the general plan, one is why are we considering this now when we're in the midst of the general plan update? And my impression is in the workshops, um, as Greg mentioned, 
uh, the prevailing notion for our waterfront was light industrial, commercial, residential. That's number one. And, and I think you have the capacity to take a twofer. Um, the second question is really more bothersome, and that is with respect to this project, in the draft EIR, there are six places where they say their intent is to operate three modes of cement production. The GGBFS, the fancy stuff, Number two is Portland cement, and number three is a mixture. What does it take to invalidate or get an overhaul of the EIR so that it addresses the Portland cement portion of the plant operation? Because without that, we're not evaluating what the project really is and which they state in the EIR. Is there a process for that? So if the, um, if the EIR, the draft EIR, this is w the reason it is a draft, um, doesn't fully evaluate the impacts of the project, um, that is why we have this public process to determine um, if it is adequate. And if not, we would need to re- I really like you, Andrea, and so I'm sorry to ask you a harsh question, but I have to wonder, why hasn't someone on your team or from the city noticed that this is not just the alternative cement, but it's alternative and Portland cement, and the Portland cement is highly polluting and a very different animal? So it, I, I don't think it should just be an average citizen bringing this to the no, city. No, I understand, and I, I agree with you. Um, what I can offer you tonight is not a very complete response, okay? And since I am not the person that is managing this project, I am ill-prepared to um, present you with a cogent and complete response, and I apologize for that. What I would really like is if you would be so kind as to type that up and submit it to me, then I can provide you with a, a cogent response. And if that doesn't... Okay, our next well, question... I can, oh, go ahead. I can, I can, I, can, I, I can answer that part. Um, we received an application and we are, we are required by law, by state law, to process it. And we cannot put a pause on it because we are working on the general plan. It is, it is on a separate track than the general plan. Um, so the state planning and zoning laws have a permit streamlining act in which we will have to act um, in, in a timely manner given the CEQA loop that we are in currently. So it is on a different track than the, the general plan update. Do we want to take questions from the room? Or? Okay, so our next question is from Cynthia Ripley. Suggest that they fill out additional cards. Uh, do you have other cards? And let them ask their questions. Okay, all right, that's fine then. Um, I, I want to ask something that is a little less fundamental than just why we're doing the EIR, although I think it's, I concur with some of those questions um, on the subjects that it's addressing, the subjects it's addressing. But what I always look for in these EIRs are what are the mitigations? that are being offered by the uh, project proponent and the, um, actually the um, city, who is the lead agency on this. We ne need to all remember that. Um, and I read today one section on the, the BCDC, who will be one of the most concerned agencies, and it's the, specifically on page 2.25, this is probably too detailed for an answer, but it says the project includes off-site mitigation for bay fill um, and, altern and, and these alternatives are not provided in this documentation. They're included in other documents. 
I wondered how we can see what mitigations are offered. Apparently, those mitigations also require CEQA documents. That's correct. Yes. So can, how do we find out what mitigations are being offered? Do you know that tonight? Um, well, Not to put you on the spot, but it seems they should be listed so that we can read what they are. Yes, I would agree. Um, They're nowhere in the document that I can find. Hmm. Are they in the okay. Policy? No. I looked at them specifically. Okay. I will take that down. Okay. So um, our next question. Thank you for that, Cynthia. Our next question is from John Kosurik. Hello, Andrea. Hello. Can you tell us the difference between Portland cement clinker and manufacturer of, as opposed to the, what's in the EIR for the Orsim project, is where they're importing Portland cement clinker and machining it to produce a powder which is not the highly polluting, yeah, can you tell about that? I wish I could. Um, I cannot. Uh, like I said before, and I will say it again, I am not the technical expert. Um, I am not even managing this project. So, I mean, I am receiving the comments as put on the notice, uh, but uh, I wish that I were able to hand this off to somebody who could answer your question. Again, if you, if you could provide that to me, I will be happy to get a response to you. Okay. One more. Um, this one's on the general plan, as yes. opposed to the Sperry Mills uh, flower production facility. Um, the zoning for that still exists? Correct. And it's maybe two years before the proposed changes to the general plan would change the zoning for that area? Yes, yeah, so about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as it stands right now for the next year or two, the zoning is correct it's for the IU proposed and, facility? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, intensive use. Okay, so our next question is from Nancy. Do you want to ask it? Um, so actually one thing I was going to say is I think you're going to need a bigger room for October 7th. This is not going to cut it if everybody's coming and this is just one little neighborhood association. Um, but um, I think um, I have some questions too just about the decision process for the timeline. So I understand that there are specific questions around the draft EIR, but then I was wondering if you could comment on the timeline for the final EIR and how that lines up with the general plan. Because as I think in line with what Ann was saying, it's hard to make decisions about one project when you've got this other bigger plan going on and understanding how those two things um, coincide in time would be really, really helpful. Sure, so um, the timeline to, it depends highly on, on how many comments, the nature of the comments, how long does it take to respond? Um, obviously, if you only get five comments and they're uh, you know, relatively easy to respond to, that isn't going to be the case here. But it's going to be a much shorter timeline to develop that response to comments document and therefore the final EIR than it would be if we were to receive hundreds of comments with very uh, difficult and technical questions in which we have to research to provide um, those responses. So uh, given that, we're estimating that uh, by the end of the year we would have, we would have the final EIR and going through the the um, public, starting the public hearing process. Um, so that's just, you know, kind of an, a guesstimate given uh, what we anticipate to be the, the amount of response, responses that we're going to have to research and provide. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Um, 
the preferred scenario, which is kind of the precursor to um, starting the environmental impact report on the entire general plan. Uh, we are targeting also the end of the year. Um, so don't do anything over the holidays, I won't be, um, to be able to uh, go to the city council with a recommendation for a preferred scenario. So after that preferred scenario, which is saying, this is what the community would like for us to evaluate in the EIR, then the EIR starts next year, early next year. I mean, the, the preliminary technical information, we've started the existing conditions, um, evaluating the existing conditions in terms of traffic, land use circulation, uh, utilities, et cetera, um, and gathering that information already. But in terms of evaluating the future uh, and that preferred scenario, we're going to um, start that next year, early next year. Okay, the next question is from David Riffer. Uh, I'm crashing your neighborhood meeting. I'm from near Washington Park. <laughs> but um, there are a lot of cultural resources in St. Vincent's Hill, and one of the things that the environmental impact report noted was that there would be a significant impact on cultural resources. I teach at a local university. I'm concerned about those things. And so I'm wondering, you know, what kind of questions this neighborhood association might come up with specifically to address this point that the report made. So I'll be happy to email you some other questions that are uh, health related. Um, what kind of uh, uh, fuels will Orson be using on the site? Um, there's big storage containers for certain kinds of fuels. There was a big spill recently in another country. Uh, what are the projected merc mercury emissions? The EPA just started taking notice of that and they're, they're saying for at least Portland cement, they're twice the, what they thought for most factories across the country. Uh, another question pertains to um, wastewater treatment. There's a Portland cement factory down in Cupertino that just got a major multi-million dollar fine and they're being asked to build a five million dollar wastewater treatment facility. And they've polluted uh, Permanente Creek, which is now considered severely impaired, I think was the language. And then um, what kind of hazardous materials will be stored on the site? So those are all questions I'll be happy to email. Thank you very sure. much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next question, do you, did you want to answer any of those here? I unfortunately am unable to really answer any of those, but I do appreciate your, your input. And if you could Jim, provide that in writing. Jim Ferry? Has the city of Vallejo vetted the legal and environmental woes Orson has had in Ireland? The legal and environmental woes that the applicant has had in Ireland, has the city of Vallejo vetted that information? Um, no. Okay, our, our next question is from Anzal Lufus. My question actually is not in regards to that the AI. Anyway, I'm Lina Villanas. And if you had been reading next door, you know my position. So my question actually is not regarding the DAIR. Um, and I know you are newly appointed in your position, so you may not have the answer. But my concern is this application was submitted to the city by the applicants in 2013. My question is, it took you two, two and a half years almost to get to this point. And not one public hearing or public meeting was 
done by the city. Unlike other cities that I had been, like Glendale, uh, Lacey in Washington, if there is a big project like this, rather than cramming the 45 days for the public opinion, as soon as you have, the city had gotten the application, they should have asked the public right there for their opinion because it is a very complex project. Especially so that you don't have in the city of Alejo a heavy industry zoning at all. So this is not only like we're approving project, two projects actually, that will change the whole dynamic of the city and you are only giving the public 45 days. When you had the application, and I'm not blaming you because I know you are new in the position, you have the application for two and a half years and you didn't even ask the public or did not even announce the public that there is something going on in that waterfront. Well, I, I can address in, in terms of <clears throat> a portion of that. Um, when we received the application, um, we didn't have nearly enough information about, uh, about the project. Um, and there's been a continual uh, receipt of information and uh, back and forth and clarification on what the project really is. Um, I would also say that we have a public hearing process that's outside of the CEQA 45 days. Um, we can, we will be getting that public input as, through the public hearing phase, and she has a follow-up. Well, um, that is understandable also, but what other cities normally implement when this is on the same time that you are considering a general plan yep. is to at least give a moratorium on other projects. But we did not even give a moratorium. We just go ahead, which you know that it will, you know, the city very well know that it will conflict on the general plan. Because we, as I said, you don't even have a heavy industry zoning in the city. What you, yeah, yeah. What you have is intensive, Intensive use. Yeah, intensive use though does allow for some heavy industrial uses. The intensive use, which is the zoning of this this. Well, site. the zoning of the Perry Mill. So I'm not quite was sure what you in mean 19, by that. Uh, in 1880 or 1870, I think, and they have a Godfather clause that if they were there already, but as soon as they left, that should be an intensive zoning for no. employment. Is there yes, there's intensive zoning does allow for heavy industrial uses. Is then you better read the ordinance. That, Is it in the new general plan? We haven't gotten to that point in the new general plan. We won't be there for another, at least another year. Probably, yeah, another year in the new general plan. And then we have a zoning code to do, which will change the zoning. So. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're still doing cards. Anzel, do you want to ask your question? You sure? Okay. Is is David Kate still here? No. Okay. Um, someone didn't write their name. How do we go about extending the DEIR response? Then I have a question from Peter Brooks. Is Peter Brooks here? I'm here. Oh, it was? Okay. Let's see. Do you want to ask it? Well, yeah. So what I would suggest is you make those that, that request in, in, to me in writing. And, and we will we will certainly discuss it and and determine if there is has not been an adequate amount of time uh, in which the public has to review and um, to respond to the draft EIR. Is there a timeline from when you get that request to when you have to respond? Um, 
No, but it certainly, I mean, we're under, we're under a 45-day review period, so certainly we would act uh, rapidly to respond to that request. No, there's no legislated or statutorial time in which we have to respond, but we certainly would respond quickly. So, yes. Is the uh, initial application that they submitted in 2013 available to us? Sure. Okay. That's my question. I have a red also. You can come into the permit center, and we can we, we can show you what we received in 2013. As far as that comment on the extension, recently the city of Vallejo extended an EIR process. Uh, if Andrea wants to comment on that, she can. But I had requested that, and they complied with it. And it's that simple. All you need to do is ask. Peter. Hi. Andrea, I want to thank you for not using the term green in your slide up there. I think that's a, a good move and a, in the right direction not to use the marketing term green. Um, I do have a couple of questions. They are related to the comment period. Um, my first question is, is there a public record of the questions? And um, also, how many questions have you received and are you happy with that response rate? And do you, do you feel that the response rate is based on your outreach to the community? Uh, well, the, 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 the final question is kind of interpretive, so I'm, I'm, I, that's Well, let me rephrase it then. Um, is there a point where you might take a look at the number of questions that you've received and say we haven't we haven't got enough we obviously haven't reached out to enough people what is your outreach how are you reaching out to south vallejo specifically how are you reaching out uh, to the areas most impacted and re reminding them about the importance of submitting questions not just comments but mm -hmm. what is your outreach Qu questions and comments certainly i think i've made it pretty clear tonight that any questions I would appreciate receiving those. Um, so I don't know that I could be more clear than that. I think we've done, um, as we do with many ma major projects, we release uh, the, we do a public rollout um, in terms of an open city hall forum, a next door posting posted on our Facebook page. Um, the release of the draft EIR on the city's website, a special web page for it. Um, Were those, did those start at the same time that the 45 day clock started ticking down or correct. were those, did those start later? No, it was, it was all up on the same, and in fact, I think it's like 46, 46 days because okay. the 45th day falls on Sunday. So, so this is my problem that I have. All of the, all of the outreach seems to be geared toward people who have computers. And, um, oh, by the way, also, we did do I, a hard I, copy. We, we actually did a hard copy mailing to those um, that have been on the, the mailing list. We have um, hard copies going to each um, home, homeowners association. We have a standard list mm -hmm. that we send hard copies of the notices to okay. as well. Um, and if anyone had expressed an interest in receiving something via hard copy, then we have taken their mailing address and we have, we have sent the actual hard copy notice to them. Based on the community sentiment, the amount of people that are interested in, in the comment period, mm -hmm. would you consider another round of outreach to the community? Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, but if you were to send me your mailing information, I will certainly make sure that you're on the on a future. I I have. Okay. Single 
family, you know, mother household are getting the information. That's right. Understood. Good point. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, on next door, you, you received your, you received no, no, your information just, on next door. I have door. something to add. If you have 125 extra dollars, you can buy a copy of the environmental impact report from the city. I've been there twice and they didn't have anything. They didn't make know where it was. <laughs> I can check. Um, I can. I, 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 I want to thank you for your patience. I know I'm feeling really hot tempered about this and I know I'm taking it out on you and I apologize. I apologize for my behavior because thank I you. am just so over the top about this. I can't tell you how much energy I spent on the LNG battle and for this to be happening again is the worst form of deja vu I have ever experienced in my life. To the young lady from South Vallejo, I would like you to know there's a name for what's happening. It's called environmental racism. Oh, This is, this is a concerted effort to try to push something down our throats. And as a, as a proud gay man, trying to jam something down my throat is not a good metaphor. <laughs> I want to ask you, based on your own personal experience as an economic development person, in a general question, your personal opinion, speaking off record, since you've said since since you've said this since you've said this none of this none of these questions count unless we submit them in writing you've already told us that so this is off record your your own by your own suggestion but here's the question if this were to go through how much economic negative impact we're getting an environmental impact report but we're not getting an economic impact report and how do we demand an economic impact report? Because when Brookside in 2007 wanted to put shovels in the ground, build residential facilities at that site, and put a restaurant on the waterfront in which the boaters in the bay can, could come up and have a restaurant that was open to the public, that would have invited people to South Vallejo, that would have invited development in South Vallejo, that would have invited de further development along our waterfront. That was just in 2007, and they were shovel ready. They were on the verge of doing it, and they had been welcomed with open arms by the neighborhood. So we had an economic downfall in 2008, it's now 2015. Vallejo's real estate market is the second strongest in the country. And if you allow these people to do this, how many decades are you going to force us to suffer without development along the waterfront? Because nobody else is going to want to build next to a Portland cement factory. Okay, hold on. We got more questions, and we only have we have to be out of here by 8:45. So if, if anybody, we have maybe eight cards left. If you want to get a card in, now's your time. Um, this one doesn't have a name. If you recognize your question, um, you can ask it yourself. I'm going to read it. An organization to capture income from port operations. More mitigation of access, fishing pier on Wilson, applicants to improve applicants to improve roads. Okay. Stephen Hallett. So, uh, Andrea, thank you very much for your patience and for answering our questions. So. Uh, the first thing is, is um, do you have business cards you could pass out or sure. is there like a big thing you could write your email address on so we can all see that? Yeah. Um, so you said that you're not the one handling this project. Could you give me the name of the person who is? Her name's Lisa Plowman, right, um, Lisa Plowman. On, uh, on behalf of the city. So she is specifically contracted to work only on this project uh, as an adjunct to city staff. All right, Lisa Plowman. But, 
T-L-O-W-M-A-N. All right, so she's contracted, so she works for a private company then? That's correct. Is she using a private email address or a city email address for this project? Uh, she uses it, her, her firm's um, email address. Ah, that might, hmm, okay. Her, her name's Lisa Plowman, L-I-S-A. Last name is Plowman, P-L-O-W-M-A-N. That's something we may need to look into in the future, having our contractors use City of Vallejo email addresses so that they're subject to the Public Records Act. Um, the second question well, I have is, and, and I know that's not you. But. No, it's all just, I mean, if she's acting as city staff, you, oh, we can, we get can discover, the, yeah, okay. it's all discoverable. Okay. Um, have other communities shot down this type of project? Have any of them ever done that? And if you don't know the answer to that, could you get that back to me, get back to me on that? And then finally the last one is, what does your department use to evaluate recommending or, or recommending approval or disapproval of projects? And have you, where would this fit, this project specifically fit in to, the, to, those, uh, to that criteria that you would use? So those are my questions, thank you. So um, to answer the second question, the first question, if you could, can you send that to me? Because I would, I, I could, um, I'll be able to answer it more effectively if you were to send it to me. But the, the second question is, um, you know, what, what we use, we do, as, as we do with every development project, large or small, we um, evaluate it for the findings that are in our municipal code. Um, we base it on uh, community input. We base it on uh, consistency with the policy documents that apply. Uh, so those are kind of the 30,000 foot view. That's how we use to evaluate every development project and, and this one would be in a similar vein. Have you received any positive public input? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I believe on Open City Hall we have received some support, uh, or there has been support for the proposed project, I should say. Anyone go to Open City Hall? Everyone needs to go to Open City Hall. It's not the place comments. Well, we can, we can use the, the comments on Open City Hall as part of the record, Judy, so. Yeah, it's a forum. Actually, 
very short, not to mention that the city failed to announce the, to the public that there is a project coming up in 2013. So I think if I am to request, I'm not going to request for uh, an extension. I will probably request for a revised DPI. We, can we ask that for me? I'm sorry about the EIR. I didn't hear that part. Oh. I would request revised because there are so many that it's inadequate. It did not uh, address a lot of issues, especially the important cement, the traffic, and uh, the effect of the port on uh, our natural resources. Okay. And do we need to make that an official request? Please. Yeah. Please do. Okay, our next question. We just have to forget about this, this DEIR at the start of our again. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that we have all, we held public meetings before even a new DEIR <laughs> is request is ordered. And by the way, just wait for that. Um, the applicants have split the cost of the preparation of the EIR? Yeah, and I read in the single cases that when, um, DEI, oh, when a DEIR is requested by the applicant, they are more swayed towards the advantage of the applicant. So, I would say, yeah, how much are those? No, I, I mean, I would just say <laughs> that uh, my oversight of Lisa and her work has been, um, you know, she's been very, um, um, she's a, a member of city staff. So she works with city staff to review the parts of the EIR um, and to receive comments back and forth. So. Um, she acts as city staff, and I oversee her and her work. So. And how long has this Lisa been looking at this project? Um, she came on board about um, maybe eight, eight months ago. When we started the, the uh, process in earnest for um, development of the EIR. Is she a contractor or is she a contractor? She's, she's a contractor, yeah. She was the former deputy director of planning in Santa Barbara County. Sure, I mean, she will be here on the 7th. Uh, I understand, I understand that. I think um, there was some um, scheduling constraint, not with her particularly, but um, because we have so many people that will be um, here that, uh, but I can certainly work to see if there's a way that we can accelerate that. Um, it's really because there were so many people that have different schedules and that was the one, first day that we could get everybody together. Yes, sir. Can we have the meeting moved to the Maritime Academy so that those people in South LA were most impacted or could possibly get to it easier? Yeah, I think and we... It's a much larger auditorium. As somebody said earlier, this room's not going to be big enough. We're yeah. The... Oh, okay, let, let's get back to our cards. We got... Okay. 17 minutes left. A lot of I know. And we tried to get it at Norman King. Um, and okay. We booked. Okay. That would be great. Yeah, we can look into the Maritime Academy as an alternate location. I know just from um, the cities when I, I've tried to get workshops and things that they, they do they are they're fairly expensive and our our public um, our, our public spaces are gratis for the city nevertheless we will try to get it at the Maritime Academy we also tried to get that meeting at Norman King uh, Community Center uh, but it was booked it's a very busy place so it's difficult to it's difficult to find a, a date that's available there so um, but we'll try the Maritime Academy and see if we can we can make that work. Uh, are you moderating, Nathan? Okay. Or? The next question. 
Um, basically, it's a continuation. Did I hear we are going to have another meeting arranged in South Vallejo and uh, to answer people's question before? Not at this time. Um, like I said, the October 7th date, we tried to get at Norman King, but it was booked. We, and, and there were only a couple of days where everybody that needed to be there on the city's end and on the applicant's end there was only a couple of days where, where it could actually work. Um, okay. October 7th was the first date, and uh, because this was available, we booked this. Oh, first of all. This room is not making up for that meeting. And also, so that, I mean, there's no reason to have the meeting. This is the room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank the, um, People don't okay. want to have, okay. First of all, I thank you for answering question. I know there is a lot of question which you are not prepared because you have been informed only a short, a few days That's before correct. the meeting. But I think if you, and I know like we follow everything according to the book, but I think we can also read from the, the question ask in this room. I think mo may all people in this room, because we live in this city, like, like consultant, they, they, they probably just take on one project, and we don't, he, we don't know if the consultant will be continuing, or I don't even know like, if, if, if she is a resident or not, or basically they are not, they don't have a vested interest in the city. Okay, my point is, if you, of course you, answer everything, follow the book. But I think we can also read from this room. I mean, there are more questions needs to be answered before this so-called, because people even make comments and they need some facts to make comments. And probably if, if some of the questions get answered, a lot of questions will go out, go away because, right. because uh, we don't even know, like there's, there are many details which needs answer before people can even make intelligent mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So I think, mm -hmm. I don't know if you see this as a need. And also another member which mentioned is, what, is, what did you see as the role of your department to educate people? Mm -hmm. Okay, we are not mm -hmm. saying we are going to against this project or right. for this project, but people need to know, right. know first. So I, I don't know what's your position on this and what is your plan? <clears throat> Well, okay, so here's, our role is, this is why we have a community input process, a community engagement process, is so that we can understand what the community is looking for in terms of information. The information is... Do you understand this today? Understand what? Like what people need? No, I'm totally blindsided today. Um, specifically because, are you on, are you on next no, no. Okay, we can't get access to next door. I am not a resident of Vallejo yet. Um, and we cannot, we. Yeah, okay. I, I guess my point is. Okay. is I don't live in Vallejo. We, we need to educate people. And also, for example, like we have, we might, in that, in South, in, in South Vallejo, if, we, if you only outreach with English, I think you also miss a, a large part of population. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need, for example, to, especially because people there probably, they are busier with their daily activity. They don't pay attention to, or they don't have the energy or time to, to, to pay a lot of attention. So we need, I mean, we need uh, to do more to reach out to the people, and not only mm -hmm. in English, but also in mm -hmm. Spanish. And or, or okay. so, so I think if before we reach out to those people, I, I, I don't see how this, this question or DEIR question is, I mean, is, is, is valid, because there are many people, they, they are not even aware of this. They don't even know anything. Okay, so that's my first question. And I, I really hope you will reach out, your, your department will reach out and educate people. 
before we actually move on into this process. That is not what I said. That's actually not what I said, but. I'm ready to voice. I don't think you've got the power calling me. Somebody on a higher level said, we don't have informational meetings. So all we're getting is EIR. She said no several times. We can organize our own meeting, but she's not going to be able to say yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I felt like the question was asked and answered many times. No more meetings. No more meetings? No, I, I didn't specifically say no more meetings. What I did say was the October 7th meeting was the first time we would be able to have a full complement of people that can actually answer your questions um, and provide that level of input to you, the response to you. I certainly can. And certainly if I had anticipated that there was going to be this level of engagement at this time, you know, th and, certainly I would have and, been more prepared. And, and, but and I think this also, if... And, and if, 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 if people are very busy, then probably the other option which has been mentioned earlier is to postpone this process. Because now you, you don't have people, you can... You, if, 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 if you don't have people to do the, the, the work properly, then let's, don't rush it, and let's postpone the date. Okay, so that's, that's one, one thing. Okay. 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 I have a, a second question. I think, uh, which basically we talk about. I think one earlier question asked is how economic development department or your department decide which project your department will will uh, recommend, approve, or dis or disapprove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, well, let's not talk about in the future, but let's look at this, this one specific project, which is the self-storage self unit. Um, Sonoma and uh, uh, Solano, okay. Basically, your de I, is that under your department? It is. Okay, so your department, so, so can you um, explain to us what is the process, especially your recommendation is different, I mean, it's basically different from the planning commission department, uh, planning commission. So can you explain, I mean, as you explained earlier, I mean, there is this consideration or that consideration. Can you apply what you just said in, in this specific case? So um, there is a level of, so staff's recommendation was based on, as I think I've said before, we, use not only the policy documents that are in place um, and what the community has said previously in determining those policy documents, um, but the community input um, and the, um, if there's public input at the public hearings, uh, we acknowledge those, um, but ultimately it becomes a decision for the city council and the city council um, was we simply make a recommendation that can be certainly overturned by the city council. Um, in that case, it was not. Um, so we use the same um, criteria, the same findings that are in the municipal code for whatever entitlements are being um, asked for um, to evaluate uh, each development proposal, as well as um, if there is community input that would happen to 
um, be compelling enough to change those policy documents, then the city council ultimately, uh, as the legislative body of the community, are the ones responsible for uh, determining um, the ultimate uh, development of a particular site based on those factors. Uh, because I was told when I was invited that this would be about the general plan, not about VMT, and that that was that was that came up on Wednesday. Okay, our our next question is from Malachi Kessler. So, uh, just to let you know, I'm the last house on the right hand side. Sorry. I'm the last house on the right hand side. I'm the last house on the right hand side, 300 Lemon, mm -hmm. the last house before you hit the water. And so I grew up in that house when Gerald Mills was there. And just to let you know, my mom died of cancer. Okay, so I want to know how will the city address the direct impact on the residents of Lemon Street specifically mm -hmm. overall in the ER report, EIR report? Well, um, if you review the EIR, I can't get into specifics about it, um, but certainly if you have particular questions on something like Limited on Lemon Street, we would be happy to take those in and respond to them as part of the response to comments. That's all I can say about it right now because I, I can't get into specifics. I don't know the specifics of the EIR. Um, <clears throat> So I'd be happy to get those in writing or email or what, however you want to convey those. But um, absolutely, yeah, my cards are up here. Okay, we, we have five more minutes and four questions or five questions. Um, Doug? Thank you. So I'm no fan of this project. I'm no fan of business as usual City Hall. Having said that, I would say thank you for coming tonight. I came here you, knowing Doug. it was a community meeting and not expecting much that I got. But what I did here was a bunch of negative comments and I get that because I'm kind of a negative person too. But so I would encourage this from everybody is nobody should leave here. Nobody should wait until the seventh to know more. Everybody who came here tonight and doesn't like what's going on, you write an email to Open City Hall, you carbon copy planning commission, the mayor, the city manager, the assistant city manager, the city attorney, the city council members, and you send that to everybody. So don't wait till the 7th. Don't read, read the EIR. I'll bet most people here haven't read it. And that's just a fact, okay? So uh, I hope you don't leave here. Uh, I appreciate you coming tonight. I appreciate the neighborhood organization for what they're doing. Having said that, don't wait. Sit down, write, you'd be surprised at the impact you can have. You want a revised EIR? Ask for it. You might be surprised. Thank you. Okay, four minutes. Leah, would you like to ask a question? Mine is not so much a question, but a follow up to what's been said. I've worked in various neighborhoods in the city for many years working on envir environmental strategies concerning quality of life and health issues and the city's noticing has been bare minimum bare minimum you get a notice this is happening if you want to come to a meeting it's happening this date you have no idea what question you have because you don't know what the project entails so you would have to be at the meeting We've talked about this a number of years with the city asking that they give more detailed information in simple terms to people who lived in neighborhoods that are being impacted by businesses so they understood there's a company coming to your town. It's going to be in your neighborhood. 200 trucks are coming down your street. Your kids are going to need to make sure they're careful crossing the street going to school. Those kind of notices is what we need to have for the community. We need people to understand how does it impact them. There are kids that are going to have that already crossing treacherous streets to go to school every day in that neighborhood. And then you're adding 200 trucks on top of that. What does that mean to the parent? Then the parent is going to come and ask a question. If you tell them a chemical, uh, 
cement companies coming, they don't know what that means. They don't know that there's 200 trucks that are going to be on the streets. So I think it's imperative for us who do know and are aware that you ask the city to specifically have a meeting that will give it clear, concise information to the people in South Vallejo so they understand what kind of questions they need to ask and how they can come and be part of this, this um, um, event. Next question is Julianne Morissef. So two things. Um, one of them is, the question was asked, what's going to be the economic benefit to Vallejo of this project? And as I understand it, one of those is supposed to be a percent of the tax on utilities because this project is going to use so much electricity. Well, okay, so what is that going to do to benefit Vallejo? How is that going? That money going to be used to benefit the citizens of Vallejo? Okay, and what other economic benefits will there be? The second thing is, um, someone mentioned earlier that, you know, well, a lot of people don't want this project, don't support it. Okay, be aware when you respond to a DEIR or an EIR, you must be specific. You must be spe specific. You must address some issues specifically, such as if you're concerned about air quality, you must talk about what the report says about how much particulate matter will be in the atmosphere and you must look at the specifics. I understand, Liat, it's a problem because the language isn't translated into common person language. And you cannot make general comments. You, so better to write a short letter that addresses a specific issue in the DAR that you are concerned about than to write a long letter in a general manner. So be aware of that because that's what's going to resist and protest this project. Thank you. So um, I want to thank everyone for organizing this meeting and being here and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. The, well, the point that I would like to make is that actually this is a two-pronged project and everyone here is very aware of the consequences of the concrete plant, but I hear very little about the uh, uh, deep port terminal. So um, what, what kinds of uh, wakes are going to be created by super tankers that may affect the Sandy Beach community? Um, they're going to be using a conveyor belt to move the material from the boat to the plant. The plant is completely enclosed, but the conveyor belt isn't, and what do we know about that? And so I, I really think, is there um, uh, an environmental impact study about the deep water terminal that's going to be um, developed, that is going to change the character of, this wa of our waterfront? Or um, is, it, is it included in the... Uh, project with the concrete plant because truthfully there's two major projects in this and I've heard very little concern about the uh, deep water terminal. Okay, we have time for one more question. Um, it, uh, piggybacking on that, that's exactly where I was headed. Um, it's my understanding that the Up County has just signed a long-term contract with the city of San Francisco for trash dumping. If we allow this deep water port terminal to open in South Vallejo, how are we guaranteed that we're not going to have trash scows from San Francisco coming up the Napa River and then unloading onto those 300 trucks a day to take them up to the North, North County? And how do we benefit? How does anybody in Vallejo benefit from a contract between San Francisco and Up County that go, that's actually impacting us? And finally, I'd like to say to everybody in the room that the medical marijuana folks in this town have given us an incredible lesson recently. It took them three weeks to gather enough signatures to submit in Fairfield to have our city council completely capitulate their asinine idea that they were going to close down all the medical marijuana stores and limit it to four. And it took them three weeks to gather enough signatures to force the city to, to capitulate. I think that we should probably take a lesson from them and we should be talking about organizing petition gathering right now because I'd be happy to knock, to knock door to door and I will take on or Kim's PR guy from here until forever because I'll be happy to argue with him at every other neighborhood association just like I did on LNG and when, if it means going on Michael Krasny's forum on Friday, I'll be happy to do that as well and I'll go to PS, to the, um, 
radio station in Berkeley, and I will try to organize the Sierra Club, and I will try to organize the Bay, Bay Area Water Keepers, and we will stop this from happening, but it's people's power, people. Her job is to make economic development happen. Her job is not to guarantee our health. Okay, um, we're, we need to close down the room. Um, I don't know if... I don't know if we need to put the chairs away, but I want to say thank you to the city of Vallejo for making me a general plan commissioner and providing me with the information I need to know to do my job. Oh, gosh.